Well, 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 it is a beautiful Monday, and the APCA coaches poll has come out, and it is now on the bottom of your screen. And a stunning thing happened in the time that we last taught volleyball on this channel. A stunning thing has happened. Not only did Pitt, you know, go you know, beyond a, a sweep, they had a matchup that ended in four sets. They also lost to SMU on Saturday in a five-set thriller. Um, and the Mustangs, you know, are able to catapult up at the polls. And they've done some things similar to Georgia Tech in which they have been able to stun and beat you know, big time top 25 programs, although SMU, uh, well, actually SMU is playing Stanford this week. Um, I need to, I'm going to need to add that to, you know, <laughs> the thing. I'm going to need to add it to the thing. But yeah, um, Pitt, you know, they're still rolling along because they are still the number one team in the country. And what I've really noticed is that the polls don't really move too much in college volleyball. They don't really move much at all. Um there's like one new team in the top 25 as of this moment, and that is Utah. But everything else is like staying pretty stagnant. Like you see the top 10 it has been stagnant for weeks. That top 10 has been stagnant for pretty much the entire last month since we last talked about volleyball on this channel. Um, I watched, you know, Kentucky get swept by Texas yesterday. Again, I don't know why Kentucky's still in the top 15, but it is what it is. They don't have any good wins at all. Um, there were a lot of errors in that game, net errors mostly by Kentucky, definitely some by Texas as well. You know, the transfers, you know, Rutherford, Skinner, and, and company, you know, did their thing against Kentucky. And, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, this is a new road for, you know, Texas and the SDC. This is all... This is all, you know, this is all that tough SEC nonsense. No, 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 no. Uh, the, the Big Ten looking like the toughest conference until further notice at this moment. Um, Purdue and Nebraska went five sets this past week, and that was an absolutely amazing game between both squads. I'm telling you, it was beautiful. The only unbeaten left in college volleyball right now are the South Dakota State Jackrabbits, which is insane to me, but all right. The only unbeaten is a team that, you know, isn't even remotely close to being ranked, you know. So it is what it is there. Um, this week, you know, you may want to look out for number five Stanford taking on number 12 SMU on the ACC network. There's also um, some Sunday volleyball, of course, you know, and, of course, there's other games throughout the week. But I'd say that's the big one coming up. You know, this week, um, beyond that, uh, uh, hold that thought on that as far as beyond that goes. Um, right now, you know, we're still waiting on the Pro Volleyball Federation schedule. We have the League One volleyball schedule. We don't have any, you know, we have times for those games and stuff like that. We don't have, you know, the networks and everything, but we do know that ESPN is broadcasting League One volleyball. And CVS should be broadcasting Pro Volleyball Federation. It should be broadcasting the PVF this year. Uh, but I don't know what the schedule is going to look like. We know it's 28 games this year because, you know, um, there's eight teams in the league now in the PVF, and everybody's going to have 14 home games, 14 away games. That's like the only thing that's been confirmed. Yeah, not much else has been confirmed right now from the PVF. Now we're waiting. We're still waiting. I'm definitely waiting, uh, but I, I need to see something. I really need to see something. Um, and again, a lot of players right now are playing either in Athletes Unlimited or they're playing overseas, you know, places like Sweden, you know. So it, it's an interesting time in the volleyball circles. So um, I'm going to have to say that, you know, there's not much for me else really to talk about to be quite honest with you, because we're still on that road to getting to the national championship in December. We're still on that road to getting there. And again, there's a lot of great matchups coming up in over the next couple of weeks and stuff like that, that are going to be very intriguing to follow. And again, the, the committee's top 16, the committee's top 16 will be coming out on Sunday, October the 20th. That's one thing I forgot to put in here. Um, so the top 20, 
or rather the top 16, you know, instead of the top 10, they did the top 10 last year. And that'll kind of help us figure out, you know, who are these number one seeds going to be? Personally, I think we have a pretty good idea of at, le- at least two. Um, Pittsburgh and Nebraska are at least going to be number one seeds. Uh, it's going to be a toss up between like Penn State, Louisville, Stanford, basically fighting out for that for those other number one seeds right now for me. Um, and a lot of other teams, you know, do have some very resume inspiring wins. Um, there's teams that do not, you know, uh, again, Kentucky is an example of a team that does not have any resume defining win. Like I would not, you know, I would not put this team anywhere, you know, near a top 16 right now. Minnesota has good wins. Um, you know, Georgia Tech has good wins. TCU with Baylor and the rest of the Big 12 have been kind of fighting it out with Kansas, you know, along with BYU as well, maybe Arizona State, Utah, of course. You know, a lot of these Big 12 teams, you know, could, you know, be interesting to follow. But, again, it's been hard to watch, you know, their games. They've usually just been watching, you know, ACC, SEC, the Big 10 games. You know, there hasn't really been a lot of Big 12 games that have been very – that have been put on TV. Another thing is, is that we do need to kind of get more games on TV. I know there's room. There's room somewhere for something. There's room somewhere for everything. So the fact that we continue to push ESPN Plus and ACC Network Plus and SEC Network Plus and Big Ten Plus and stuff like that, when there are top 10, top five matchups going on, you know, these streaming services, it's, absolutely, it's, it's disgusting to me. So I don't know what you want to say, you know, again, you know, Penn State, you know, has absolutely elite, an absolutely elite, you know, team. Pittsburgh, again, just absolutely elite at every level, you know, although they did lose, you know, again, they did lose to SMU, and SMU ain't no slouch at all. They're no slouches at all. Uh, You know, there's a lot of... There's not a lot of games going on today. Um, in fact, there's no games involving the top 25 at all. There's just a bunch of smaller conferences playing today. So, you know, I figured today would be the best time to talk, you know, some volleyball. Um, next time I come to you with volleyball, it will be sometime in November, probably November the 11th, probably better. Uh, I think that's supposed to be better today. November 11th is supposed to be better today. That's what the day it always is to me. But, um, yeah, so um, if you want to look at some info, I want to talk some stats real quick if I can load the thing up to talk some statistics. Uh, is again, you have you have you, I mean, it, it's just been it's just been a great time, and again, a lot of teamwork you know goes into this, and that's the main crux of this is the teamwork. And Pittsburgh has just been on point with the teamwork, you know, throughout the season. Nebraska's been on point. Penn State's been on point. Texas, when they can, you know, get the, get that teamwork flowing, they get it going. Um, Louisville and Stanford, again, I really want to watch more Louisville and Stanford. I'm going to watch Stanford again this week, you know, on, on Wednesday night. Um, but, yeah, it's been kind of tough. It's been kind of tough when, you know, there's – Certainly, again, there's certainly some room, and there's also the other thing of games taking a bit too long, you know, a bit too long, but it's fine, you know. Uh, you know, again, some of these stats are still, you know, kind of, you know, still kind of in favor of, you know, some of these other teams, you know, some of these lower tier teams, like, again, like, Lauren Yakabuchi from, and I think I'm saying that name wrong, you know, from Wright State, and Wright State is, like, on, like, the top 10 of, like, all these things. In fact, they lead the country in assists per set right now at 13, nearly 14%. Uh, and and, and Miss Yakubi herself, and I'm pretty sure I'm saying her name wrong, is he's leading the country in assists per set at nearly 12. Again, you know, Bergen Riley, you know, in Nebraska has been great. Izzy Stark, you know, the sensational freshman at Penn State has also been great. Um, Taylor Anderson at Purdue, been a fantastic, you know, a sister. Um, Oregon, you know, Louisville, teams like that. And, again, those undefeated South Dakota State, you know, Jackrabbits, blocks per set, may want to, 
may want to talk about those because, man, and there's been some good blocks that have resulted in some crazy plays towards the end of, in, towards the end of sets and to, in the beginning and the middle of sets, you know, especially some of these games that I've been watching. You know, I mean, my goodness. Um, and then, again, assist per set, like I said, Penn State just absolutely, you know, they share the rock. Uh, Creighton shares the rock. Utah, again, they got into the top 20 this week. Um, you know, and there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of things that, you know, we could talk about more. Um, you know, I'd, I'd say maybe uh, maybe aces per set. Let me, let me take a look at look at aces per set, you know, real quick and see if I can, you know, see who's, who's best in the country at that. Um, mm, mm. Trying to think, because I, I, I mean, again, we, I'm gonna try and see, you know, more games down the line. Pittsburgh, especially. And again, I, I'm I'm going off on a tangent, you know, about you know broadcast times and stuff like that. But I'm yeah, I'm being serious. Uh, I want to see, you know, gals like Olivia Babcock, you know, who's one of the top in the country at aces per set. You know, I want to see those types of players. You know, it's cool seeing my Longhorns, you know, play. You know, at noon on a Sunday, you know, when NFL is kind of lacking in, in a sense. But I want to see some other teams play, and we need to see those teams on TV. Let's just be real. So um, that'll do it for me. I'm gonna, again, I don't really have much else to say. I'm hoping the top 25 will change at some point. You know, by the time we come back in, in November or sometime, and the top 25 doesn't change, you know, that crazily. Um, I don't know what to say, man. I don't know what to say at this point. So, um, for me to you, let me get on the bat of here. We're going to talk college football tomorrow. Another crazy college football Saturday happened. And then another crazy NFL Sunday happened. I don't want to talk about the Cowboys, but I'm going to I'm gonna talk about the Cowboys anyway on Wednesday. Tuesday night, I will be at the American Airlines Center watching the Dallas Stars take on the San Jose Sharks, I will have some sort of, you know, some sort of video, you know, some sort of short coming, emanating from the AAC this Tuesday night. So just make sure you stick around and I'll see you tomorrow for all the fun. <laughs>